Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Hava Ridwani and here on my channel today, we're going to be talking about how you can shop sustainably. Specifically, I'm going to go through some kind of tips and tricks and some kind of sustainable shopping philosophies that you can follow when you are thinking about shopping sustainably and ethically. All together, I actually have three steps that I'm going to be talking about today and they're quite detailed, so I'm just going to jump straight into it. Number one is to consider the hierarchy of needs. I'm going to put it on the screen because I feel like I didn't pronounce it very well. So any kind of psychology students or a psychologist in my audience is going to appreciate the wordplay around the hierarchy of needs because um, it pays homage to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Um, so I'm going to pop the diagram on the screen so you can actually see what it looks like. The hierarchy of needs was actually created by Sarah Lazarovic. Basically the idea is that the hierarchy of needs is how you can shop sustainably. So you start at the bottom and then work your way up. Starting at the bottom, the very number one thing that you should be doing is using up what you have. So for example, let's just say that you hypothetically speaking, have an event that you want to go to and you want to wear a dress. And step number one, if you're going through this process, is to use what you have. So go through your closet, go through every single item of clothing that you do have and look for a dress or look for a suit that you want to wear to this event. So use what you have, easy enough. The second port of call is to borrow. So I think this step is really useful if you have any siblings or friends who live close to you. Uh, so if you have an event uh, that you want to go to and there are items of your wardrobe that is missing, for example, shoes or a bag or some kind of accessory, I would suggest that you actually borrow some of these items from your friends, especially if it's a one-off kind of occasion. But if it is something that you want to own in your closet as opposed to it being just a one-off event, what I would suggest that you do is actually do a swap process with your friends or your family members. So I have actually done this with makeup in the past. So I have actually sat down um, and had a swapping makeup party with my friends. So if there were any palettes or foundations or lipsticks that I wasn't really using, I gave that to my sisters or my friends. And if there were things that they weren't using, I would take it if it interested me. With the swap thing as well, one thing that's really great is that uh, on Facebook, you can actually find groups called um, Buy Nothing, and then you can type in the suburb that you live in. And there should be some Facebook groups within your suburb where people actually swap items or they're usually giving up items because in the age of minimalism and Marie Kondo and decluttering, people are always trying to get rid of stuff. So in that sense, a person's trash is another person's treasure. So I would highly encourage that you have kind of swap parties with your friends or your family members or check out Facebook groups in your local area to see if anybody has any of the items that you are looking for. Moving on from that is to thrift or shop secondhand. So there are many ways that you can do this. You can hit up your local charity shops that are near you or alternatively you can actually look up secondhand websites or apps. So some of the common ones that I tend to use are eBay and Carousel and I also use Vestiaire Collective if I want to purchase any secondhand designer items. Uh, but I do know that in other countries you do have other apps or websites such as Depop and Poshmark. So I would recommend that you check those out. If the item that you are looking for is not available on the secondhand market, then I would recommend, if possible, that you make the item. Now, this applies to those of you who are creatively inclined or who are crafty. I am not one of those people. In high school, we actually had a home economic subject and we were asked to sew a skirt as part of the project and I only sewed half of it because I didn't know how to work the machine and can't sew to save my life. So this is for those of you who are very crafty or creatively inclined. If you can make it, then I would encourage you to make it. So the last port of call for the hierarchy of needs, once you go from the bottom all the way to the top, is to buy the item. So we've talked about the hierarchy of needs. So when you've gone through that process and at the end you decide that you want to actually buy the item, here are five questions that I ask myself when I'm thinking about purchasing from an ethical or sustainable brand. So the first question that I ask myself is, what are their labor practices? So when brand Browsing through company websites, see if they have any information on fair wages, the working conditions and the employment practices that they put in place. If you're really curious about this topic, I'd highly recommend that you watch the True Cost documentary, which goes into how some of these major huge fashion corporations um, tend to have just the most horrible labor practices in countries such as India. Um, I think there's that case of... Um, the sweatshop that actually collapsed, like the building actually collapsed on itself. 
um, and it goes very much into the dark side of fashion so I would recommend that you actually watch it when you're in a good state of mind uh, but if anyone's interested in that documentary I'll find a link for it and link it down below. The second question that I usually ask myself is how do they source the materials? Do they source the materials in an ethical or in a sustainable way? So for example some of the jewelry companies that I actually purchase my jewelry from actually source their materials from old electronics and old jewelry pieces which you can send in and then they actually turn those jewelry pieces into something new. I know that one of the other jewelry brands that I purchased from, because uh, I wanted to get a diamond necklace for myself for my birthday last year, but I didn't feel comfortable getting a diamond necklace uh, with a diamond that was mined. So I actually purchased a lap grown diamond. So that's the diamond that I wear every single day. Um, I'm actually gonna be doing a sustainable jewelry brand video uh, soon and I'll talk about this necklace and just basically jewelry that I love. Anyway, the third question that I asked myself is how are these items produced? Are they using any animal byproducts or synthetic materials when they're actually producing these items? For example, looking at clothing uh, materials specifically, polyester is actually really bad for the environment because uh, it's actually made from coal, oil, and water. Uh, but then there are alternative materials that you can buy that are biodegradable and more sustainable, such as organic or fair trade cotton. Uh, there's also linen as well. And one of the materials that has kind of come up, and I'm actually very interested in this material, is tensile. So tensile is actually made from wood pulp and it's made into fibers as well. And the way that it's sort of produced is a bit of a closed loop system. It actually uses less chemicals and less water than cotton to actually be produced all around from everything that I've read. A really good material um, so I'm actually interested in getting more I guess tensile clothing in my wardrobe so I guess that's my third question is how are these items produced and what goes into the actual product question number four is what packaging do they use so I usually purchase products that come in packaging that are recyclable compostable biodegradable um, or ideally if the product itself has no packaging at all that's a serious bonus and the last question that I usually ask myself is what is the company actually doing to contribute to ethical and sustainable practices in the world for example are they putting their profits into environmental research are they doing what they can to emit carbon emissions and make sure that they are carbon neutral just kind of things like that so what are they actually doing with their profits are they feeding it back into sustainability and ethical practices so those are the kind of things that I tend to look for uh, when I'm thinking about purchasing from a company so I'm also bearing in mind that all of these questions that I did ask are quite complex questions um, that you may not necessarily be able to get the answer off of the actual website because some companies are not very transparent about that on their actual websites and in some cases they tend to greenwash or be very super vague with their statements so it sounds like they're doing something good but actually in reality they're not. So to help you kind of research into different sustainable and ethical brands, I do actually have a website or an app that I actually use uh, that gives me information about specifically what is the brand's impact on people, planet, and animals. The website or the app that I actually use is called Good On You. Um, and as far as I know, um, don't quote me on this, I'm pretty sure that this was actually created by Emma Watson or Emma Watson is a part of this initiative. So I actually use this app. I'm actually gonna pop it on the screen so you can actually see what it looks like. And I literally just search up the brand and it comes up with a rating. So the rating is actually on a five point scale um, and it goes from we avoid to not good enough it's a start, good and great. My first port of call when I'm thinking about purchasing from an ethical or sustainable brand is to actually check the brand through this app and see what their rating is like. Generally, uh, it's a start is at least the bare minimum of what I would actually go for. So that's usually a three out of five. Ideally, I would actually purchase from brands that have a good or great rating. Something that I do want to note is that um, with the app, a bit of a limitation is that some independent brands are gonna be quite difficult for you to find on the app. One good thing though is that you can actually suggest the brands and if enough people actually suggest it, then they will actually look into it, contact the actual organization and get the information and then give a rating based on all the information that they could find. I'll leave a link down below for the website and the app for you to check out. So the last step that I would recommend for how you can shop sustainably, and this may be a bit of a controversial opinion, 
is to buy the item with the intention of keeping it in your wardrobe or in your life for a very long time. The reason for this is because shopping from a sustainable brand is not going to be for everyone. Once you actually factor in the um, fair labor wages and how they actually produce the materials, uh, what kind of materials go into it, um, and the packaging, for example, you know, paper or cardboard is more expensive than plastic. Once you actually factor in all of those things together, these items will have a very hefty price tag. And while the price tag and a lot of transparent companies reflect the work and the worth of the materials, a lot of the time shopping sustainably is not going to be cheap and it's not going to be accessible to everyone of different incomes. I would recommend that if you actually can't purchase from an ethical or a sustainable brand due to uh, many different factors such as your income or accessibility, then I would recommend that you actually purchase an item from just any brand that you can afford, but take care of that item and keep it in your wardrobe or in your life for many years to come. Fast fashion arguably can be slow fashion if you take care of that item and it stays in your wardrobe for five to 10 years. I have shirts that I bought from Kmart that were nine to $10. I bought those shirts maybe you know, six to seven years ago that were nine to ten dollars. At the time I was a student and I wasn't working so I had basically little to no income and just spending whatever money that I got from my parents and those shirts have lasted me like a good six to seven years and they're still going strong. So in that sense I would say that if you are buying with the intention of keeping the item in your life for a very long time, that in itself is also sustainability. So that's it for today's video. I know it was a bit of a long one. I'm going to be starting a series on sustainable shopping brands. Uh, right now I've got ideas for um, sustainable jewelry brands. Uh, I've got one on bags and potentially one on clothing as well. Uh, if there are any other ones that you were thinking that I should do, be sure to comment down below, uh, but also comment down below what are some sustainable shopping practices that you do as well. If you liked my video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content on mindful and sustainable living. As always, thank you so much for watching my video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!